Hey, kid. Behind you. Do you like SpongeBob? <laughs> well, hey, me too. In fact, last week I was cruising around suburban neighborhoods in my SpongeBob gaming van, looking for other small children who enjoy SpongeBob. When I happened to cross a copy of the SpongeBob SquarePants movie game, just lying on the ground. I then rushed back into my van, taking care not to knock over any small children with my abnormally large cock. I then put the game into my Wii, which proceeded to make this sound. Oh, good morning, Jake Brothers! Where's my man? Yo, yeah, real! Yo, has anybody ever jumped the Lambo at 6 in the morning? It's 6 a.m. right now. Hey, yo, good morning, Jake Brothers! What's good? She just jumped the Lambo. I'm sorry. I'm a savage guy. I'm sorry. Little one. So today, we're going to play the PC version, which is fine by me since I remember playing this version a lot more than the other. However, this is a game from 2004 that you cannot get on Steam, GOG, Epic Games, or even the Uplay Store. Which, even though I left without purchasing any titles, made sure that I did not leave empty-handed by giving me Chlamydia. Thank you, Ubisoft. I will hold on to this chlamydia for as long as I live, as a reminder of why we can't have nice things. So, Chekhov, how are you going to play this game? Well, I'm going to do it through questionably legal, yet completely justifiable means. I'm going to abandonware.com, where some infinitely wise wizard has left a comment that I assume was meant for me. He says, this game is amazing and funny if you're trying to make a YT video about it. Thank you, I eat pee pee. I make this video in your memory. Click the download button to receive your full speed 30 minute download. That's remarkably fast for 677 megabytes. I certainly hope that my ISP doesn't have a heart attack. Once it's downloaded, you're going to want to mount it, but be careful. Mounting an ISO is a lot like mounting a wild gorilla. You need to do it gently, or it might fight back. <laughs> Once you have successfully mounted the ISO, or gorilla, this tutorial will work for both. You're going to want to go into the ISO and click the auto run. Make sure you're running it in compatibility mode and install the game. Once it's done installing, you can play this wonderful game. But recording it is a different issue. For some reason, OBS likes recording the game like this. And there aren't any settings within the game to fix this. But worry not, for I am a master of stretching the image until it fits the desired resolution. And now that that's all out of the way, let's get into the game, which is actually not too bad. Dare I say it, I kind of enjoyed it, thanks to my prescription nostalgia goggles. But what if you want to play this without the nostalgia goggles? Well, you probably won't enjoy it as much, but let's get into what it is. The SpongeBob movie game on PC is a point and click adventure, which might look a bit odd to anyone who's only played the console version. But don't listen to those people. They are what I like to call Omega Virgins. And if you haven't realized yet, this game is for Chads only. And if you are not a Chad, I recommend that you log off of YouTube right now and go back to doing virgin things, like reading young adult novels and raping small dogs. You may think it feels the same as a full-grown Australian Shepherd, but believe me, it does not. The game starts out in SpongeBob's house, where SpongeBob has just woken up and is excited about the opening of another Krusty Krab, because he believes that he will be picked to be its manager. But before he can go to the grand opening, he needs to get dressed and brush his teeth. And, as you might expect, these objectives are accomplished by clicking on things, picking them up, and combining them in specific ways. These are nice little puzzles that are not very difficult for big-brained people like me, but might pose a slight challenge to the insolent little snot babies that this game is actually intended for. Just to give an example of the kind of puzzles you'll be solving in this game, let me tell you about how I brushed my teeth. 
While I was able to easily obtain a toothbrush, the toothpaste had obviously been stolen. But by who? Who would want to steal my toothpaste? It couldn't have been Patrick because he's never brushed his teeth. Gary? Not possible. He knows that I would sell him to the French if he ever did anything to cross me. And, like Sherlock Holmes always said, when you eliminate the impossible, whatever remains must be the truth. So, I came to the only reasonable conclusion. That my filthy Jewish neighbor, Squidward, had stolen my toothpaste so that he could use it for his bizarre Jewish rituals, which usually require a virgin sacrifice. But joke's on him, because I fucked my toothpaste last night. So I broke into his home, turned off his radio, and went back to my place to call his phone so that he would be sufficiently distracted when I break in again to get my toothpaste back. But unfortunately, the phone lines are down. So I go outside to see what's happening. The phone repairman gives me some bullshit about the lines and tells me that he is easily startled. So I did this. Ah! Then I fixed my own damn phone line like a goddamn American. I then called Squidward and told him that I was a Nigerian prince who also happened to be looking for someone to inherit my wealth. This will surely keep that Jew occupied while I break into his house and take back my toothpaste. This is truly one hell of a game. The game is split up into eight different chapters that are not very long. Each chapter includes a small amount of puzzles to complete before the story progresses. And when I say a small amount, I mean no more than two or three, but that's all right, because while these levels are very nice looking and fun to explore, you run out of things to do in them fairly quickly. Anyone who's played any humongous entertainment titles will know that you can go into any part of any humongous entertainment game and spend large amounts of time just clicking different things in the background. And while we have that here as well, it is nowhere near the abundance or creativity of your average humongous entertainment title. But it's okay since the levels don't really overstay their welcome and I like the colors they used. Graphically, the game looks pretty all right. However, the models are completely lifeless, but this adds to the charm of the game. It wouldn't be as entertaining without stuff like this. Hello? The writing is also not too bad. I honestly found myself laughing a good few times. It's really the voice acting that's hit or miss, specifically with Mindy. Out of my way. I need to get out of here to help my friends. Now, let's talk about the story. It's like the movie, but worse. Plankton has stolen King Neptune's crown, blamed it on Mr. Krabs, and it's up to you to save the day and prove that you are a big boy. I believe this game was made alongside the movie, which would explain why there are no actual scenes from the movie in the game. Instead, you have production stills. But that's okay. If you want the actual story, you can just watch the movie, which is genuinely great. I highly recommend that you watch it while under the influence of whatever you can find in your parents' sex drawer. And if they ask you what happened to mommy and daddy's fun time poppers, deny everything and walk out of the living room with all the confidence of a man who is not watching the Spongebob movie while under the influence of Viagra and amyl nitrate. But if four hour erections and a loose anus is not quite your style, you could always play the PC game, which not only has the point and click aspect, but also shitty mazes and two terrible mini games. I give it a three out of five. And I give you an invitation to join me in my SpongeBob gaming van. A thick and veiny thank you to the brave communist workforce in my cherry orchard. You have all done fantastic work, and it will not go unnoticed. As your glorious leader, I hereby decree that all who live within the confines of my cherry orchard will be allowed to eat one cherry 
per year. Yes, I know, as generous as I am handsome. But be warned, if you dare to sneak more than your allowance, the KGB will track you down, cover your genitals in peanut butter, and toss you into a pit filled with transgender beavers who have been expertly trained to bite the hands that feed them. So, be warned. <laughs>